Now, Lee gives Stewart some discretion you know, and says, you, know, you can approach this however you want, but Lee urges him many times, be careful. Don't lose your force. All right? you know, don't go too crazy. Stewart immediately thinks, awesome. This gives me the opportunity to make a name for myself. And what Stewart's going to do, as this map shows, is he's going to make a name for himself by riding entirely around McClellan's army. Lee just says, hey, just go up on his northern flank so I can see what it looks like over there. But once Stuart got that information, he could have turned around after a couple of days and gone back. Nah, that's not cool enough. That's not going to get my name in the headlines. That's not going to make me a legend. Stuart takes his troops and rides all the way around uh, McClellan's army. While Stuart is doing that, of course, the Union cavalry discovered that Confederate cavalry is riding around the Union army. So the Union cavalry starts pursuing McClellan, uh, starts pursuing Jeb Stuart. The Union cavalry commander is a fellow by the name of Philip St. George Cook. Philip St. George Cook was instrumental in sort of helping develop the United States cavalry. He was a very uh, skilled officer, a career officer, had done an awful lot to advance cavalry tactics during the course of his career, and actually serves nobly and with great credit throughout the Civil War. But I would wager that most people who've ever heard of Philip St. George Cook only hear of him in this context, and this is the only thing they know about him. What's interesting about Philip St. George Cook chasing Jeb Stewart? Jeb had married his daughter. So Philip St. George Cook is the father-in-law chasing his son-in-law around the Union Army. 